welcome to my channel. Well, I finally got what was misdelivered. Basically, the company that I ordered this from sent me another one. And what we have here is a cartridge adapter. It's a 12 gauge to 22 long rifle rifled bore. Now they make them with smooth bore also, but you can see this one's got rifling in it. And the advantage to one of these is you can see that the bore is offset from the center a little bit. And that just allows this thing to go anywhere in the chamber and still fire. I usually line it up like this, straight up, so that this little scallop here is for you to extract the shell. Now, the way it works is, sorry, it's all bouncing around here. You drop a cartridge in, and you put this in your shotgun. It's the same size as a 12 gauge, two and three quarter inch shell, but this thing is stainless steel. Pretty heavy, too. It allows you to fire a 22 long rifle, 22 short, 22 subsonic, uh, 22 long. Look at Look at the price of this. $1.39. That was a long time ago. Uh, long rifle. I don't think I have any price on this. And then these guys right here. Shorts. These are... These are um, they're like longs with no powder in them. Just a primer. Is it a long or is it a short? Yeah, it's a long. It's a 22 long rifle. Not, I mean, it's just like a 22 long, like one of these guys. The difference is it's just got a little tiny bullet on it, you know. And uh, there's no powder in here. There's just the primer. But these are very quiet. When they're fired out of a long barrel, they're very quiet. And they have enough power to kill small game. You know, like a squirrel, a rabbit if you do like a headshot. Um, and limited range. But really it allows you to use any, any, two, any 22 long rifle that's out there. It will not chamber 22 Magnum, and it's and that's because 22 long rifle and 22 Magnum are two different kind of shells. The other thing they they share in common is the caliber 22. As you can see, the caliber will fit, but the diameter of the cartridge is uh, larger than a 22. See, these have got like heel type bullets in them, and this is a regular crimp type bullet in other words there's a little bit more of the base down here this one right here this is the widest part you see on a on a long rifle also this is the widest diameter of the bullet the rest of it it narrows down to fit that and to get it to sit in there anyway um you can get all different kinds of uh calipers for this you know you can get, like, since I have a 38 special, the next one I'm going to get is uh, 357 Magnum, which would allow me to shoot 38 special and 357 Magnum in a shotgun. Now, it's these are usually designed for single shot shotguns. Something like this that folds down it's a single shot 12 gauge and it's pretty easy to uh, you know it's compact so you can put it in a backpack and uh, it it will shoot regular 12 gauge rounds and then if you've got this adapter you've got 22 uh, shotguns are good for 
with birdshot and buckshot and everything, maybe 40 yards, maybe a little bit longer with buckshot. With slugs, maybe 100 yards. Uh, but if you get a... Uh, now, you've got a short barrel on this thing, even though this is a 12 gauge. You've only got like an inch and something barrel, an inch and three eighths barrel on here of your actual rifling. That's better than a smoothbore. The reason why you want rifling, rifling made a big difference in, in uh, the gun world. Before we had smoothbores, yeah, you got an inch and three quarter inch. One and three quarter inch of rifling. That makes a big difference. If you have a smooth bore, the bullet goes out there, you know, and it's propelled. But uh, what rifling does is it imparts a spin on the bullet. And it gives it a centrifugal, it makes it go straight easier. Whereas if you just had force behind it, it's going to start tumbling. You, a lot of times you'll see they'll do what's called keyholing. You'll see it in the target, the bullet will hit like this. And, yeah, it's going to expend a lot of energy and everything. It's going to dump it and everything going sideways. But it's not as good as if it was just going straight like it's supposed to. Yeah, these are pretty cool. I just want to show you that. And uh, the shotgun, the 12-gauge shotgun I got for like $100. Brand new. It's made in Turkey. And so they're the one... Of, one of the most affordable uh, type of cartridges. You can get one for 22 Magnum also. You can get a separate insert for that, which I might do. I don't know. I'm thinking about it. Because I've got my uh, Rough Rider pistol in 22 and 22 Mag. And it's got a longer barrel than this. But you have to carry it, you know. It's a separate thing and everything. This way, if you've got the cartridges and you've got something that fires a single shot, then you've got the caliber. They've got it for... I've got a lot of 45 ACP, and I don't even have a 45 anymore. So I'm going to get one of that. And you can get them to adapt from 12 to 20 gauge or 12 to 410 gauge. Now, those you don't need rifled because, you know, they're just a, a, a bore adapter. And this thing shouldn't even hit your bore when it... When it fires, it won't. Once the bullet leaves the board, that's only an 18.5 inch barrel on the the one that I have on the fold down. <clears throat> it's not going to impart anything more other than uh, might help reduce the noise a little bit, but it's not going to do anything for uh, this is this is basically your your barrel right here, no matter what else you've got on there. And yeah, they're 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 pretty nice. I think it's going to come in quite handy as a backpack. You know, if you've got a backpack shotgun and you've got 12 gauge and you've got slugs, buckshot, and birdshot in there, I've got number six birdshot, which is good for just about everything. You know, it goes the whole range: rabbit, squirrels, you know, pheasant, whatever you got. And uh, and then you've got caliber adapters. Well, whatever you're carrying as your sidearm, should you should have one of those in there too, just for versatility in case your sidearm gets messed up or whatever. You can switch to like 38, you know, a 357. And because it's a, a rifle or a, a shotgun, you've got a, lo a longer sight radius. It's easier to steady. You're going to be more accurate, even with a shorter barrel like this. I've seen people hit with these things out to 100 yards, no problem. And it's a small, you know, small little barrel. You you could do it with a pistol, too. I mean, but still. Anyway, there you go. I just wanna thought I'd show you that, give you a little update on uh, versatile things. And this company, too, is a very good company because they, instead of, like I said, the, the post office screwed up and, and put this one and uh, a watch cap a wool watch cap which would have fit in the mailbox also they put both of those things in somebody else's mailbox and the very day that they did it i filed a report with uh, the post office and they sent me a form letter back saying this is our first contact don't reply to this this is an automated email nothing they said we'll contact you within one one business day 
of filing this. Well, it was on a weekend, so nothing happened, and then nothing happened on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So I finally went down there after 10 days, you know, I went in there and said, I talked to someone in person, and I said, hey, um, these items are missing, and I can't get a refund from the sellers and stuff unless I have, you know, some kind of proof, because all it shows is delivered in at mailbox, and so, oh, let me check it. And she went back there and looked, and when I first came in, there was nobody. And she was the only one behind the counter. And when I turned around and looked, there was like five or six people waiting in line, you know, after she went back in an office and took her sweet time and came back, you know, because I gave her the tracking number. She came back and said, oh, it shows it was delivered in the mailbox. I said, yes, that's what I'm trying to tell you, but it wasn't. Uh... And she goes, here, just give me your phone number and I'll, I'll get back with you. She never got back with me. All right, so this company had contacted me and they said, look, we can't issue you a, a refund unless you close the case. If you close the case, we'll issue a refund to you. So I closed the case. I thought, I'm, I'm going to get scammed. You know, I'm going to close this case and they're not going to issue a refund to me. But they did and they sent it out and I got it today. The other company, they told me... Uh, the separate company one with the cap they told me oh we can't do anything you know it's, it shows that it was in there and and ebay after a while if you if you do it if you file a claim with ebay they'll uh, they'll resolve it within a certain amount of time and on that one i didn't follow up with the seller i didn't contact him up and say hey you know I, i'm sure it's not your fault i'm just saying ebay's got this guarantee you know and i didn't get my product i, I spent my money it's not my fault. I didn't take your stuff. Well, anyways, I didn't get around to saying that. And eBay resolved it and said, look, we, we ruled in their favor. We're, we're closing this case. Uh, you, you can't get a refund because it shows it was delivered. So, in one case, I get the, I get the item back. I get another item. They, they ate the cost, you know, because they, they realized that, hey, that's just a part of doing business with eBay. You know, if they wanted me to, one other uh, time when somebody misplaced something, I went and filled the form and um, the post office got back with me through the mail and had me fill out this form certifying, you know, under penalty of law that I didn't steal it or whatever. I said, sure, I'll, find, I'll sign that. And then they issued me a refund. So you just got to watch out when you're dealing with stuff on online and uh, dealers and stuff like that try to work with them as soon as it's missing you know contact them and let them know what you're what's going on and uh, as far as ebay goes they uh, they they offer you an option up there that says uh do you want a refund or or do you want a replacement on both of them i asked for a replacement and in this case they closed the case and gave me a replacement and the other case they just let eBay rule and say, hey, it looks like it was delivered. Nothing we can do about it. Tough, you know. So, uh, I could probably fight it some more if I wanted to or anything, but I just ordered another one through Amazon. I ordered another cap through Amazon. So, see what happens? If you mess up, post office, you wonder why you don't get raises and stuff like that or you wonder why people complain about you is because everything could be going fine all along i saw the tracking everything can go fine all along until it comes down to the postal carrier and if the postal carrier can't tell the difference between your number you know and another number and just put your stuff in there you're screwed unless you can catch them I, like i said now when it shows delivered in at mailbox i run down there and uh i usually catch the postal person leaving the uh the postal carrier leaving the the mail box area and if there's something missing i'm gonna be able to try to flag them down personally say hey hey wait before you run off you show this is being delivered can you show me where you delivered it because look you can search me i ain't got it you watch me walk up it's not here you know anyways sorry to drag that on out for you but there you go Thank you for watching and have a nice day.